you need haircuts. You guys look like bums. Sure enough, year five, haircuts. Thank you, Ministry of Magic. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is year five of Harry Potter's time at Hogwarts and everything really just kind of starts out on the wrong foot for him, but the right foot letting you know where this story's gonna go. A Dementor attacks him and his cousin, so he uses a Patronus charm. Then the Ministry of Magic's like, oh, you used a charm in front of a muggle? Well, you're expelled. Then he has to fight that, all the while trying to fight the fact that no one believes the fact that Voldemort is back and killed a student, except Dumbledore. Dumbledore's like always got Harry Potter's back. Feels like Harry Potter Potter could literally burn Dumbledore's house to the ground and he'll be like it wasn't me it was it was one of Luna's nargles and he'll be like all right, I guess it was. That is trust right there. And tonally speaking, the tone has shifted. This is when David Yates took over as director. David Yates would direct Harry Potter from Order of the Phoenix on. And here we have a whole new set of tone. Yeah, it's no longer the light, warm, bit of happy, family-friendly fantasy it used to be. Now it's like Hitler's returned and everything sucks and Hogwarts now sucks because they have a horrible person teaching Defense Against the Dark Art. And that is a bit of a bummer. When I was younger, I was always like, come on, let's get to the dark shit. Now that it's here, I'm like, I, I really like the light tone of before. I still profess Prisoner of Azkaban is the perfect merging of the two tones. But hey, now we're here, Harry's growing up, his friends are growing up, Voldemort's back, darker tone, bad things are happening. See, Order of the Phoenix is a special place in my heart because after watching this movie, it's what provoked me to read the books. Tell you a little more about that in a bit. And again, like Goblet of Fire, I'm going to have to talk about the end of this movie, which is spoilers for you, been warned. But this movie really is about meddling. The Ministry of Magic is meddling. They don't believe Harry Potter, they don't believe Voldemort's back. So they send Dolores Umbra which is pretty much crazy cat lady with a condescending ass laugh. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be like, I I'm kicking you in the face. Don't laugh, like, don't giggle. So Harry Potter just has to fight the man and go against it. The conflict breeds the conflict. No one believes him, so he's like, well, you know what? I want to fight. It's called the Order of the Phoenix because there was the Order of the Phoenix, which was a group of wizards that came together to fight Voldemort. And there's a great line that Sirius Black says where he's talking with Harry Potter and Harry Potter's like, do you think a war is coming? And Sirius Black's like, it feels like it felt before. And that's all you can really assess. You can just assess what will probably happen in the future or what might happen in the future based on what's happening now and put that against what happened before and see if it's the same path. It's a great line, it really is. So everyone's trying to protect Harry Potter, but Harry Potter's like, I wanna fight. And his world sucks because he has nightmares every night because he has PTSD because he saw a student die a couple months ago. Yeah, for, you would think it's a year ago, but really it wasn't a year ago. It was just a few months ago. It's summer break, it's not that long. So they all get together in the room of requirement and they train. And I love the training montage because Harry really is a good teacher. It shows all the little young wizards, you know, all these students that you've grown to love and know and they're practicing their spells and he's giving these motivational ass speeches. One of the best lines he says, he says something like, every great wizard in history started out as nothing more than what we are now. And if they can do it, why not us? And I'm like, the logic is sound. Why not you? It's so good because I mean, this movie really does touch on the fact that everyone's like, ooh, Harry Potter, he's like, Look, man, I don't know. I'm just winging it half the time. Most of the time, I'm lucky. It was a great perspective of what heroes actually are versus what people think they are. And really, if we are objectively looking at it, here it is. Cornelius Fudge, who's the Minister of Magic among the Ministry of Magic. He doesn't believe Voldemort's back. Harry's trying to tell him he's back. Dumbledore's trying to tell him he's back. He's like, he's not back. But really, look at it. There were no witnesses. A kid died. And I have said in many of these Harry Potter reviews where I'm like, Hogwarts is dangerous as hell. A kid could die and a kid did die. And after this kid dies, Harry Potter's explanation is Voldemort came back and killed him when there are no witnesses except Harry Potter. So let's look at that. Let's say there was some paintball competition and it came down to two kids out there. There were no witnesses. And then one of those kids died. And the other kid's explanation as to how was Hitler came back and killed him. Do you think anybody would really be like, yeah, totally. I think that happened. No, there are no government witnesses or no military witnesses. At best, people will be like, I I'm sure you miss saw something. But don't go around saying Hitler's back. It makes people freak out. Or at worst, makes you look crazy. At best, you look really desperate like you're waving in front of a camera like you need attention. Just don't do it. See, in terms of storytelling, this movie's very informative. So sometimes this feels like the slowest of the Harry Potter movies. A lot of talking, a lot of learning. Things are happening, what to do. Lots of people sitting around talking about what to do. And this is the spoiler territory, which I do like the end of the movie. The end is where it really kicks off. Finally, they go to this place with the best of intentions. Then they throw down with some Death Eaters. And then spell, 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 spell. Bellatrix Lestrange stands up, says, I've had a cadaver, bam, and hits Sirius Black. It looks like it hits him in his arm. Which right there, he's like, ah. Oh, like he's having a heart attack and he just kind of falls back and dies and goes into the death gate. Not like the cycle. 
but the a death gate. But right there, that was when I was like, I need to read these books. Because Sirius Black just died, and I didn't really give a shit. I didn't, and that's one of my flaws in this movie. This great character dies, the great character was not really utilized in the series much at all. Then when he dies, you don't really care. And it's not really just on this movie, it's on Goblet of Fire also. It's like, should he have been used in Goblet of Fire? Probably. Should he have been used more in this movie? Probably. Anything to really build up the fact that Harry looks up to this guy as a father figure, as the last of his family. And when he dies, you should give a shit, you should weep. And I really didn't, and I was like, I have a feeling I should care about that. I don't. I think I'm gonna read those books. And when it happened in the book, I wept. I don't wanna be that douchebag that's always like, well, in the books. But I can't help it in this case. This really is the movie that made me read the books. And I'm so glad I read the books. And then, in everyone's defense at the Ministry of Magic, when Cornelius Fudge sees Voldemort, and Voldemort just apparates out of there, he's like, oh, he's back. And he totally clears their names. It's like, yep, Harry Potter was telling the truth. Voldemort is back. I don't know what to say. They were right. We were wrong. So really good for him. He was like, all right. He gave everyone a hard time. He sent the shittiest human being ever to Hogwarts to kind of control the situation. But when you saw it with your own eyes, you were like, I can't argue it. He could have just been like, Voldemort. Rubbish. It was, a, it was an illusion. You created it, Harry Potter. Yeah. But he didn't. He didn't say that. So he was like, yeah, yeah, he's back. Guys, in the end, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is probably my least favorite Harry Potter movie. Still enjoyable, sure. Still has its place among the hierarchy. But in a world where you have eight movies and one of them has to be your least favorite, this is my least favorite. I like the place it's put Harry Potter in. It's very real. It's very tragic. It's very dark. But I love that in that darkness, Harry has found his way to, you know what? I'm going to fight this Voldemort asshole. We might as well do it ourselves. It's a real stick it to the man kind of movie. But the pacing's a bit sloggish at times. And one of the most emotional deaths of the Harry Potter saga, you don't really feel. And you probably should. But it really is the seething hatred you have for Dolores Umbridge coming into here that really just, it carries you through this. And I will say, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is a good time. No alcohol required. And that's right, this video is sponsored by you guys. Thought I was good at the, I don't actually have a sponsorship for this one. But I do want to thank you guys for watching these Harry Potter reviews. I know it's not a very Harry Potter-centric time right now, so I gotta assume the reason you guys are watching these reviews is because you genuinely like hearing me prattle on about things I like. So really, thank you guys for that. So Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Where does it place for you? As this is my least favorite Harry Potter, I want to know, is it your least favorite? Is it your most favorite? Is it in the middle somewhere? Whatever you think, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.